What's up guys? So we're gonna go over lab number seven, which is the digestive uh, anatomy. So you can follow through here if you want to. Let's do this. So right here we have the hard pellet. Here's the soft pellet. And then we saying this tip right here is gonna be the uvula. And then this right here is the teeth. And then we have the tongue, which is this muscle right here. And then the frenulum is gonna be right around here. Frenulum is on the tongue right there. And then your, yeah, uvula is right here. We went over that one. Your parotid glands are right here. <laughs> parotid gland is right here. And then we have your submandible, submandibular, and sublingual. Yeah. There we go. So sublingual is gonna be right here, and your submandibular is gonna be this gland right here. And you also see it on here. So this one would be the submandibular right here, submandibular gland, and this would be sublingual gland right here. This kind of space right here is gonna be the nasopharynx, and then from here to here, this area we're gonna call the oropharynx, and then this area right here, here we're going to call the laryngeopharynx. And then we have the epiglottis, which is right here, which closes this so that your food or water doesn't go down your trachea or anything, so you can breathe good. That's always nice. And then this part right here is going to be your trachea. Right here, the gastroesophageal sphincter is this part right at the top. The first part that your food's gonna go into your stomach is the gastroesophageal sphincter. And then this big part of the stomach all around here is gonna be your fundus. And then kind of the smaller region, like on this side, like this whole region of the stomach is gonna be your pyloric region. And then this right here, this ending uh, sphincter is gonna be your pyloric sphincter. And then uh, we have the greater curvature. We have two curvatures. Greater curvature is the one on the outside, and lesser curvature is this one right here. Greater and lesser curvature. And then we have the small intestine. We have the duodenum, which is this part back here. It's the first place your food's gonna go to after it exits your stomach, so it's gonna be this part back here. And then the next part it's gonna go to is the jejunum which is gonna be sort of this upper part right here. Well, this upper part, we're gonna call that jejunum. And then the uh, end part, like down here, like here and lower, especially near the back, like around here, we're gonna call the ilium. And then on this model, we have the liver, which sits like this. We have the liver and the gallbladder right here. And then your pancreas is gonna be this uh, organ right here and this white uh, kind of tree looking thing with little branches is going to be your pancreatic duct. You're going to have a couple, a couple things. So you're going to start with your ileocecal valve right here. Your ileocecal valve and this right here is going to be your cecum. And then if you look at the back of all this you can see your appendix, which is this little structure that kind of juts off of your large intestine right here. That's your appendix. And then we have your greater omentum, which what we're going to call that is kind of this yellow part on the stomach. It's actually something that kind of wraps down here like this. It's kind of a covering for all of this. But we're going to call it this yellow part of the stomach for now. And then uh, you have your ascending colon, so this part that's running superiorly up here. It's gonna be your ascending colon. And then this first kind of U shape we get to is called your hepatic flexure. And it's called your hepatic flexure because your liver, the big part of your liver sits on that side of your body. And then the hepatic flexure leads to the transverse colon. It's going across here. And then we get to another flexure, and this flexure is called the splenic flexure. It's called that because the spleen's on the side. So we have a splenic flexure, and then we have the descending colon, which leads to the sigmoid colon, kind of like an S shape at the end. And then the sigmoid colon leads to the rectum right here, and then to the anus, which is right here.
And that's it for the large intestine. have the hepatic veins, which are going to be these blue ones right here. The blue ones are going to be your hepatic veins. And then your hepatic portal vein is going to be this big purple one right here. This is going to be your hepatic portal vein. And then we have the round ligament, which is right here. This whole thing is the round ligament. And on the back, this sort of kind of Y shape right here, this is going to be your falciform ligament right here falciform ligament. And then the big part of your liver is going to be, this whole part is going to be your right lobe, and then this part right here is going to be your left lobe. So you have right lobe and left lobe, and that's because it sits in your body like this. That's how it's going to sit. And then you're going to have your, we already went over the cystic duct, you have your gallbladder, which is of course this big thing right here, your hepatic artery. It's going to be this red one right here. It's going to be your hepatic artery. And then we have your inferior vena cava, which is this blue one, big blue one right here. This whole thing is going to be your inferior vena cava. And then we have the quadrate lobe and the caudate lobe. The quadrate lobe is going to be this whole thing right here. It's going to be your quadrate lobe. And your caudate lobe is going to be this part right here. This is going to be your caudate lobe. All right. That is it for Lab 7. Good luck.